I could and I'm in such a good reading mood. But maybe this is a bit too optimistic. I went to the bookstore and I bought a new book. <laughs> I just got a very exciting package in the mail. Hey everyone, welcome back to a new reading vlog. It is such a beautiful day today and I can't wait to go on lots of walks and read lots of books for the next couple of days because I'm in a very good reading mood. Maybe I will even read one of the next two books that I'm going to show you because this video is kindly sponsored by Book of the Month, which I'm so excited about. If you don't know Book of the Month, they are an amazing US-based subscription service that now also ships to Canada. So they ship to US and Canada and basically every single month their team goes through dozens of new releases and they pick their favorite ones that you can choose from. So you don't have to do the research and you get a beautiful hardback shipped to your doorstep. So I picked two of the books that you can choose from this month. There are more, but these were the ones that spoke to me most. So the first one is called Spells for Forgetting, written by Adrian Young. And it says from best-selling author Adrian Young comes a deeply atmospheric story about ancestral magic, an unsolved murder, and a second chance at true love. And then the next one, okay, I may have been a bit biased because the cover is so gorgeous. It is called Hester. This is written by Laurie Lico Albanese. And this is a historical fiction as well as a retelling. And this is a retelling of Hester Prime, a heroine of Nathaniel Hawthorne's The Scarlet Letter. And it's a journey into the enduring legacy of New England's witchcraft trials. So that is why it sounded very interesting. And if you feel like getting any of these books or any other of the new releases, you can use the code BRIT to get your first hardcover new release for only $9.99. And as I said, they now also ship to Canada, which is super exciting and it's completely risk-free. So if you would like to skip a month, that is no problem at all. You will not be charged and you can just start whenever you want again. Again, thank you so much Book of the Month for working with me on this video. Video. it really really means a lot i'm very excited about this vlog i'm going to be doing lots of fun things i just feel like my reading mood is getting so much better what i did this morning is i sat in front of my bookshelf i took out my laptop and i wrote down all the books that are still on my shelf unread because i keep buying too many books for example yesterday i went to the bookstore and i bought a new book so I organized all of my unread books into Notion. I created this whole table and I've got a grand total of 128 books that are unread on my shelf, which is a freaking lot. But knowing in terms of like booktube and book talk um, bookshelves, some people have way more. So I still feel bad, but I also feel a little bit good because they're not 500. <laughs> But yeah, 128 is just too much. So my goal is for the rest of the year to just try to finish and try to read as many of them and to not buy as many books because I honestly, I do not need it. So the book that I'm currently reading is Before Your Memory Fades by Toshika Zugawaguchi. This is the third book in the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. And it's a short story, kind of a short story collection of four chapters each that all takes place in the same universe and, um, with the same characters but they're four short stories and it's about a little cafe where you can go to travel back in time to kind of do something you wish you did or say something to someone you wish you said in the past however they can also travel to the future now it's all a bit new in this book um so i've got one story left i have to say it's my least favorite of the three books as of yet the first two books i cried a couple of times and i haven't cried yet but it's still very good and I'm going to finish it today because I've only got one story left, which means that I will have already finished one book. So what I did is I created the list and I just, um, in total it says 128 and then I can tick which books I have read and then it won't deduct it automatically from the 128, but I will just know that this is what I started, but then it will calculate how many books I've ticked, you know, so then it will give me the total of books I've read. I just have to like, you know, deducted from the 128 myself, if that makes sense. I don't know if there's like a, a Notion thing that I can do, but I like Notion more than Excel um, because it just looks a little, little bit nicer. So that's my goal for today, at the end of the day, to finish this book and then we can start a new one. Oh shit, I just remember. No, I forgot to add a book. <laughs> no. Okay, it's 129. This one was still on my couch because I planned on reading this one soon. But I haven't written it in the Notion yet. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. 
Okay, here we go. The next one. Okay, it's 129. Can you see my ear? Oh yeah, you can definitely see my ear. <laughs> Elf. But now it's time to do some work. I'm going to cut stickers because this Sunday I'm going to be selling my products at the Young Adult Literature Festival in Utrecht. It's a very big young adult festival like it's a big literature festival that i think is like a week or two and then one day they've got a young adult edition where i'm going to be selling my products so i need to like restock the stickers so i can take lots of stickers with me so let's cut some stickers and i think at the same time maybe read my book whenever the thing is cutting i can read my book hope you're going to like this one pages left and I don't want to keep reading because I just read the one sentence and I don't want to keep reading. Okay. Final sticker sheets. <laughs> Okay, well, I basically jinxed it saying that I hadn't cried yet whilst reading this book, but ugh, he did it again. Oh my god, why do these books always make me cry? <laughs> because when I was reading it, I was like, I think I'm actually going to give this like three and a half out of five stars. Maybe four, but now again, I'm bumping it up to like a four, four and a half stars. It was again very good. Literally every single one of these three books has made me cry. But a positive thing is that I've finished cutting all of the stickers and that I can take the first book <laughs> of my list. I actually just remembered there's another book coming in the mail today. So I'm going to have to add one again, um, 130. But I'm gonna add that one now actually. And now I will turn it around because this is gonna be the beginning of the end of my TBR. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah. And the next book I'm going to start. Let me turn you around again. I'm going to start reading a couple of paragraphs of the comfort book by Meth Haig. This is basically just short sentence sentences or poems or just a little thought about reflections on hope, survival, and the messy miracle of being alive. And it says, and in the darkness, even the tiniest fragments of light can shine, capture our attention, and maybe even lead us home. And I really, really love Meth Haig as a writer, but I haven't really read this one. So maybe if you are having like a down day or something, or maybe after reading this book, because it is freaking sad, it is time for some hope. Life is not a ladder to climb, a puzzle to solve, a key to find, a destination to reach, a problem to fix. But life is understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Oh, that is definitely one to think about. Life is understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Oh my god. Okay, so I'm going to start at the beginning, um, so that way I can, you know, know when I've actually read everything. But I'm just going to leave it here on my desk and just read a little bit, you know, throughout the day and the week. So this will be the next book that I'm reading. I've also decided that I know which audiobook I'm going to be listening to. I've actually got this one physically on my shelf, but it's a non-fiction and I really like listening to non-fiction audiobooks, so I will grab it. I've actually got the original Dutch version as well as the English one because I was once sent this by the publisher. But it's basically, um, the English one is called Humankind, A Hopeful History. But the original Dutch version is De Meeste Mensen Deugre, written by Rutger Brechtman. It says a new history of the human race, of people. This one is massive. It is so freaking big. But I'm actually just going to, oh wait, I just noticed that all of this is just references. <laughs> 
but I'm going to listen to this on audiobook because I saw the original Dutch audiobook and I find listening to non-fiction books very nice on audiobook. I think it's much easier to listen to compared to a fiction book. So this will be my next audiobook. And yeah, oh my god, this one is so heavy. Like if I just not hold it, I will break the spine instantly. I don't know if I want to do that. It does kind of look really nice because it's so big. Now I'm gonna listen to it. Um, so yeah, that will be my audiobook. And now I'm just going to clean up a bit and start working on packing some orders. Oh my god! <laughs> I just realized that the first ever, like the little introduction of the book is, I'm still like, some tears are falling. <laughs> the introduction of the book is a little section from Lesser Still Young Poet by Rilke, which is one of my favorite non-fiction books. So that is very exciting. <laughs> I just got back home from my work and I also forgot that I still got these two books in the mail for my monthly collab with Book of the Month. <laughs> so, oops, we're going to have to add two more books and then this book that is arriving this afternoon and I think then it is really the end of my physical TBR <laughs> for now. Also read a little bit, like 9% of The Mason Mentor Doge and why have I only just started reading this book? It is already so good and so kind of like hopeful. I'm more like I'm already recommending it, even though I've listened to 9% only. It is also narrated by the, by the writer, Rutger Brechtman, so of course the Dutch one only. But um, so yeah, in English it's called Humankind and I already recommend it so much. It's super interesting. I desperately need to wash my hair, but it is like 5 p.m. now and this afternoon Leora from Books with Leo came over to my place to work together. Um, so she was just working over there and I was just working over here, but it kind of feels nice to have someone to work with if you're working for yourself um, because I don't really have colleagues. So this was very productive and I managed to listen to like 10% of the audiobook right now and I read a few pages of the comfort book. However, right now I'm going to listen to the audiobook more because I'm just going to clean up a bit and start making dinner. And I've decided to make like a bulgur salad because I've not been eating very healthy in the past couple of weeks, which is of course fine, but I don't know, I always just feel better if I'm eating a bit more healthy and eating some more vegetables. So I'm going to be making a nice salad and listening to the audiobook at the same time. I'm in such a good reading mood right now because I made this list. I don't know, it helps me be more motivated to actually pick up books that I already own. Oh, by the way, I told you about the book that I was still, you know, um, waiting for. It's this one. It is everything that Oscar Wilde has ever written in his life because I want to do a challenge with myself to read everything Oscar Wilde has ever written. Poems, letters, his novel, plays, it's all in this book. I don't like the cover at all, but I have got a few beautiful editions of his work, but now everything is just in one. So I know that I've got everything. This is very intimidating. It is massive. <laughs> but I, I once had this idea of like trying to read everything Oscar Wilde has written in a week, but maybe this is a bit too optimistic, but I don't think I will try to do it in a week because then I don't think I will enjoy everything as much as I would if I just take my time with it a little bit more. So maybe I will try reading everything he has written in a month. Let me know in the comments if there is someone here who has read everything that Oscar Wilde has ever written because he's one of my favorite writers and I'm very curious 
about the rest of his works because I've only read The Picture of Dorian Gray as well as his children's fairy tales, the importance of being earnest, and I think that may be it. So I have lots to read. <laughs> Okay, it's 7 p.m. and I just went on another walk for like 45 minutes just to listen to more of the audiobook because it is so good. I've listened to 27% already today and it is so easy to listen to and to read in general because I was expecting it to be very full of all these experiments and scientific explanations and yes, there are definitely lots of these um, scientific experiments. However, the way that he's talking about this and explaining it is through stories of from the, the prehistoric eras as well as just like a, a couple of decades ago about boys who ended up shipwrecked on a desert island. And if you think of Lord of the Flies, I haven't read it, but he was talking about this book, how people were just getting angry at each other, getting on each other's nerves, people ending up, you know, dying because they didn't work together. However, in real life, he was talking about this actual story of teenage boys ending up on a desert island and they lived there for a year and a half, being very healthy and strong and, you know, making sure that they could live together and that not everything will end in chaos and death. So because he's telling it through these stories, it is super easy to listen to. Hence why I've been on two walks already today. <laughs> But now I'm definitely going to have some dinner. As you saw, I just made a salad. I added lots more things in the end. I still had some carrots as well, some olives, some gherkins, some do you like salt and pepper, some olive oil, some lemon juice. Just made it into a very nice big salad. So I'll be having, I think, half of that and I'm also going to be making um, some spinach. <laughs> super random but I'm trying to eat everything that I've got in my home. So I'm going to be having some spinach that I still have. It's like frozen spinach, like creamy frozen spinach. And it's so good if you like warm it up. It's, it's the weirdest meal ever. <laughs> but I just need to finish everything that I've got in my home and then I can do a big grocery shop again. Same as with the burger, I still had that. So I was like, I'm going to try to finish as much food as I've got. Going to have some dinner, I'm going to read some more from the comfort book by Matt Haig when I'm actually having my dinner and I will keep you updated. Oh my goodness, I'm in such a good reading mood. I also remembered I still had an avocado and it's honestly the perfect one. Okay, the pit is quite big. I have recently had one that had the tiniest pit ever. It was a dream avocado. <laughs> but look how good it looks. So I added half of this to my salad as well, as well as some seeds that I still had. So now it's a nice filling salad. I'm not gonna save this for the rest of the salad tomorrow. Good morning everyone. <laughs> My hair is still wet from the shower but I just wanted to film this little update of my reading because yesterday I've nearly finished the comfort book. It was such a lovely evening. I had some candles on, it was lovely and warm in my house. I was just listening to some music and I read so much from the comfort book because some pages are literally um, a few sentences so it's very quick to get through and very inspiring and I think that if you are struggling with any mental health issues at the moment that this book can definitely be of great help to just 
kind of ease your mind sometimes or helps to make you see things in a different way or in a different light and I'm very much just enjoying this book. It is very beautiful and I like that some things are very very deep and some things are just how I'm making the perfect hummus. You know, something very <laughs> simple that can give you a lot of joy. So I'm very much recommending this one already. I'm most definitely going to finish this today. And I've also listened to 74% of humankind already. I am flying through this book. The moment when I woke up this morning, I think I listened to like an hour of the audiobook when I was still in bed. Then this morning when I was getting ready, doing my makeup, I listened to even more and I've nearly finished it. It is so interesting. I like, it's not a perfect book, but it is definitely giving you just a lot of hope about the human race and it's super interesting how he is explaining all of this you know through all of these experiments and giving lots of examples to give you an idea of how people act when there is chaos or with certain experiments or in different types of schooling systems and with playing and it is just incredibly interesting what i like is that he's talking a lot about these experiments that they did in the past for example like the stanford prison experiment as well as that shock experiment and those are actually all these type of experiments that I was taught about at university. And what was interesting is that at university, they just gave us the outcome of those experiments. However, Rutger Bergman is actually going a lot more deeper and finding even more like behind the scenes information that was never really published that ended up actually kind of debunking a few of the outcomes of these type of experiments, which is super interesting. I'm enjoying this book a lot and I'm definitely learning a lot as well. So we'll see if I finish it. Oh, by the way, what I also like is that he isn't afraid to admit that he was wrong in the past. Whenever he thought like, oh, I used to think it was like this, but then I did more research and I was wrong, which I think is a very adult thing to do, to admit your mistakes. Okay, I'm now going to start work. I'm going to start editing this vlog. I'm going to pack orders and I will keep you updated whenever I finish a book, which will probably be quite soon. Okay, my hair is definitely an improvement from the last clip that <laughs> you saw. I now sometimes put in these rollers that actually work really well. I need to figure out a little bit more how I can get a bit more volume, but I'm actually really happy with how it looks. It is 12, 15. And I just finished The Comfort Book by Meth Haig. This was very beautiful. As I said, it's quite inspiring as well and just really makes you focus on the little things in life that are so beautiful and so important. And it makes you sometimes think of things in a different, like in a new way to create a bit more comfort in your life. And I am personally extremely lucky and happy with how I'm feeling mentally. I'm feeling very well. So it's, it, maybe it doesn't really apply that much to me because he was definitely talking a lot about what to do when you're feeling depressed or very low in life, but it was still incredibly beautiful and inspiring. And I just really like Meth Haig as a person and a writer. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited that I finished this one. I'm still listening to the audiobook, but because I finished my physical book, I can also take off one but more book on my notion, but I'm also going to be um, finding a new physical book to read. Okay, I'm going to change the battery and I'm gonna pick a new physical book. I'm excited. Okay, I've ticked off the book. I've already checked two books, which means I've got 130 left because I had to add a few books. But now it feels good to see that I've ticked two already in two days. The next physical book that I want to read is Fresh Water by Akwaki and Metsi. And I've had this one on my shelf for quite some time now, but now is finally the time to pick it up. So I will read you from the back of it because I have to say, I don't really know what this book is about anymore. Ada has always been unusual. Her parents prayed her into existence, but something must have gone awry. Their troubled child begins to develop separate selves and is prone to fits of anger and grief. When Ada grows up and heads to college in America, a traumatic event crystallizes the selves into something more powerful. As she fades into the background of her own mind, these altars, now protective, now hedonistic, take control, shifting her life in a dangerous direction. This was actually uh, also nominated or longlisted for the Women's Prize for Fiction in 2019. I'm very excited to read this. Let me know if you've read this. I've heard really good things about this. So this will be my next physical book. But right now I'm going to be filming my Q3 reading wrap up because I now do all of my reading wrap ups in um, Qs, so Q3. Uh, which is July, August and September. And I've read 15 books 
And I also read so many big books in the past couple of months, which is a miracle. I read three big ass books, which hasn't happened in a very long time. So I'm going to be filming that today. And I hope by the time you see this video, it is already live. Um, if it is, I will link it up there. I just had some lunch. I'm now going on a walk to deliver the packages, um, the orders, and I'm going to be listening to more of the audiobook because it's so good. So I let me see how far I'm into it right now. 78% of the way through the audiobook. Amazing. I will keep you updated. I just got a very exciting package in the mail. It is September 30th. Keep that in mind. It is the Bayekor advent calendar. I think this is like the equivalent of Selfridges in London or maybe like Macy's in America. It's just a very nice department store and they always release this beautiful advent calendar. I asked on Instagram like what calendar should I get because I normally always get the Rituals one which is also a beautiful beauty brand but I feel like every year it's kind of the same. So I asked on Instagram and so many girls said get the Bayekor one. I'm gonna open it up. <laughs> I already looked at the products that were inside because I was like, I'm not gonna buy one where I know that there are products that I won't use. And I genuinely think I will use everything. Look! Oh, it's so cool. It's so pretty. I have to be strong. It is so pretty. I just wanna like... Oh, okay. I don't see anything yet, but you can take them out and they are little boxes. This is the prettiest outing calendar I've ever had. Okay, now I just have to wait two months. Okay, bye. I'm gonna go back to editing my video. I'm FaceTiming with Lexi. Hi! We're having a coffee date and it's so nice to finally catch up again. Yes, oh my God, it's been yes. so long. <laughs> it is like 6 p.m. I just finished editing my wrap up, which I'm so happy I managed to film and edit it in one day so I can upload it later today because I didn't have a video for this week yet. But now I'm just finishing up my salad that I made yesterday. So I still have some left. And then after that, I'm gonna go for another lovely walk. I just listen to my audiobook and I need to like move a little bit because I went on just one short walk today and I feel very stiff. So I need to move a bit. And I'm also re-watching The Queen's Gambit for like the fourth time maybe. <laughs> it's just too good. And I just wanna watch a show that I already just know it's gonna be good. Good morning, it's the weekend. And yesterday when I went on my second walk, I managed to finish <laughs> Humankind. I listened to this in like a day and a half. I could not stop listening. It was so good. And I just thought it was incredibly inspiring and super interesting. What I love is that every single chapter was about a different, either an experiment or something that happened um, with people and then he really started to go into detail about how all these people responded to this how they acted and he really wanted to f go even deeper into all of this you know and really try to find all the evidence that he could find to kind of you know prove that people are essentially good so this is definitely a must read in my opinion i'm so glad i finally read it even though, like I should have read this years ago. This is one of those classic, well not classic, but one of those books that half of the Netherlands has already read. Let me see when it was published. This is the English one, but oh, 2019. Why does it feel like this book is so much older? Okay, so it's not too bad, but still. So many people in the Netherlands have read this book. It's one of those, it's just one of those books that you see at every airport, you know, and in every bookstore, um, right at the first table. But I'm very glad I finally read this. That means I can take off another book of my list. And I have I already, yes, I told you about this one. Yesterday, before I went to bed, I read 20 pages of this one. Like I really have to get into this book. It started out, well, it's the beginning. So it is starting out quite vague and very unique so we'll see how this is going to go 
I was struggling a little bit with just the first couple of pages like okay what the, the writing style and just like what is happening um, but I've only read 20 pages so far so of course I can't really tell you too much about it yet but today is a very exciting day I don't think I'll be able to read much because I'm going back home to my parents house because we're hosting a very big family day because every October we host a big family day because my family is really big and we don't really get to see each other that much if we don't organize something so every October we all come together, like most of them come together. So I will try to read a little bit on the metro there because that's like 35 minutes, but then we'll see. Now I can also find a new audiobook to listen to. I'm just, I don't know if I'm gonna start one now, but I am definitely going to try to find an audiobook that I've got on my shelf to see if there's an audiobook version of that. Okay, quick update. I know which audiobook I'm going to listen to because I saw that Autumn by Ellie Smith is on the audiobook servers that I use. I have to say, I don't really know what it's about, so <laughs> let me read you from the back. It says, Daniel is a century old. Elizabeth, born in 1984, has her eye on the future. The United Kingdom is in pieces, divided by a historic once-in-a-generation summer. Love is won, love is lost. Hope is hand in hand with hopelessness. The seasons roll around as ever. Sounds intriguing, bit vague. I'm curious, let me know if you've read this. Love this cover, by the way, very much. So I'm going to listen to it a little bit now whilst cleaning up my apartment and then I'm going back home to my parents. It's the next day. Yesterday it was the annual family day and it was so much fun to finally see everyone again. We also hired a big bouncy castle. So of course I had to test it out. I mean, it doesn't matter how old you are. If there's a bouncy castle, you go on the freaking bouncy castle. But I do also have some reading updates because when I was on a metro there and back, I read until page 61. Oh, fresh water. I'm finally getting a bit more into it because it is quite unique and interesting and something I didn't, I've never read before. But you're really just getting into the head of this girl called Ada and it's super interesting. Uh, I, I can't really tell you too much about it otherwise I will spoil something. Let's just go with that. It's pretty good so far. I have also listened to nearly 40% of Autumn. A super, super, super detailed story about these two people daniel and elizabeth and honestly sometimes i'm just like everything that is is mentioned in a single chapter could be written down in one page but then there are other chapters where i'm very you know into what is happening between these characters and their conversations and especially daniel's mind um it's just incredibly interesting i'm enjoying it but i don't really know to think of it yet. So I'll definitely just continue listening to this story. Something I've never read before. But right now it is like nine o'clock in the morning on Sunday, really early, but I'm going to Utrecht in a bit because there is the Young Adult Literature Festival. It's part of like the big Utrecht Literature Festival. Um, but today is all about the young adult books and I'll be selling my products there, which is super exciting. So I just packed my suitcase over there with all my products and I'm going to be selling some stuff there today. So I'm going to take you along with me. I will try and film a bit. I've got no clue how, you know, how crowded it's going to be, but we'll see. I'm very excited and it's probably going to be a very long day, but a very exciting one as well. So let's go to Utrecht. I will bring this book with me on the train because it's like an hour away. So I will have some time to read. Good morning, it is a Monday morning. I have many updates. So first of all, yesterday I went to the Young Adult Literature Festival, which was so much fun. It was such a lovely busy day and I saw quite a few things as well, which is so incredibly exciting. So that was already a great part of the day. And then when I went there and when I got, went back, I managed to read quite a bit more from Freshwater. I am almost halfway through the book and I'm enjoying it very much. It's still incredibly unique and you're reading from these just from these, I just, I can't, I can't really tell you this. It's like a spoiler, I'm not gonna say it. It's something I've never read before and you really go into the mind of this person, which is really cool. So very far into this one, I have also listened to so much more of Autumn, the audiobook. I've only got this much left and I will definitely finish it today. This one is really kind of simple. You, you just get these really detailed stories about certain parts 
in these characters' lives, in Daniel and Elizabeth's lives. And sometimes I'm just like, this is completely unnecessary, but it also kind of adds to the story and it is, it, it feels very calming and very as if you're going really deep into these characters' lives. So I'm enjoying it. It's not amazing, but I'm definitely enjoying it and I will most definitely read um, the other books in this series as well. So this morning, I'm actually going to take it quite slow because yesterday I worked the entire day, of course. So right now I'm just going to listen to the audiobook. I'm going to vacuum, I'm going to do the dishes, clean up a bit. I already did some laundry and just make sure that my house is nice and tidy. And then I'm just going to do some work but I always like it when it's just completely tidy. I also went to my PO box and I got a really cute package in the mail. It is a little poetry collection from a girl named Anna. And she said that she and her sister really enjoyed my videos and that she wrote this little poetry collection, which is so cute. And she sent it over to me. So thank you so much, Anna. I haven't read anything from it yet, although I did look through it and I saw that there is a sunflower poem, which is so cute. And that were really small, short poems. So I'm super excited to read this. Thanks so much for sending it over. I also saw that she's selling this one on Amazon, so I will leave a link um, down below in the description so you can check it out as well. It came with a lovely note and a little sunflower card. So thank you so much, Anna. It really means a lot. Okay, let's listen to the audiobook and let's clean up my apartment. Okay, it's nearly 12. I vacuumed, I cleaned, I did my nails, um, some new gel nail polish, very nice nude brownish. And I watched part of the new episode of House of the Dragon and I finished the audiobook Autumn. Let me see how many books I have yet to read. 128, exactly how many I started with this week, but still, <laughs> because I added, you know, I had to add a few books. I've also decided to just get rid of the little um, column where I have to check the books and I will just delete the book from the list. So then it will automatically calculate how many books I've got left. Like this, so I've deleted the checked column and now I can just see right there, 128, because I've just deleted Autumn. But this was such a productive and good reading week. I've read so many books and I'm so back in the reading mood. I really hope to finish Freshwater very soon as well. And it really is my goal that by the end of this year, my com complete like physical TBR is a hundred books or less. Will I be able to do it? Who knows? We'll see. I'm definitely going to be reading a few short books from this list first, but I, I don't know. It feels like a good goal and I, I think I can do it. So I think I'm going to end this vlog here because I believe it's going to be a very long one. I really hope you liked this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to comment something, but you don't know what to comment, comment a rose emoji because I see on this cover that there are beautiful roses. So comment a rose emoji. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you're having a beautiful day and I will see you in my next one.